Hello and welcome to the final module of the NPTEL MOOC course on Economics of Health and Education. In this uh, final module, we will discuss about uh, workforce issues. I have planned two lectures for the final uh, week of this course. Uh, today we will discuss about uh, health workforce and in the next class we will discuss about labor market transitions. I have discussed uh, time and again in various uh, classes since the beginning of this course that one of the purposes of looking at uh, or understanding the interactions that takes place within the health market and the education market is to understand how ultimately it impacts labor market transitions or how human capital formation that takes place because of investments in education and health uh, ultimately leads to uh, labor market outcomes or how do we see transitions taking place uh, with respect to human capital investments in the labor market and uh, what kind of transitions do we see and what are the labor market outcomes that it results in. So, one of the interesting aspects of discussion of health, education and labor altogether within the larger context of development economics is to understand the interconnections between these markets. And uh, therefore, in this final module we will look at um, two specific issues. We will look at uh, labor market transitions that take place because of human capital investments in the next class. And in this class, I want to focus on health workforce and I will discuss why it is important to discuss health workforce as a separate uh, group of specialized workers uh, within the larger uh, group of uh, labor force or workforce matters that we discuss as part of labor economics. And in the final uh, uh, class of uh, this module, uh, we will summarize uh, the discussions and we will conclude uh, by taking reference to all the classes that we have had so far of this course on economics of health and education. So, I have planned today's lecture as follows. Uh, I want to discuss about why we should study about health workforce as separate from general labor force. Uh, I want to take up the mainstream uh, discussion or models of demand and supply of health workforce. Uh, so, we want to discuss the wage determination model of demand and supply of uh, health workforce and these are standard models of labor supply that we discuss in the context of labor economics. I also want to discuss the stock flow model which uh, draws a lot of inspiration from uh, various uh, healthcare um, uh, related uh, scholars who have worked in the international arena as well as academicians and practitioners and um, there is a lot of evolution in the way we have come to understand the health labor markets. So, we will discuss the stock flow model and then finally, we will move on to the uh, currently widely used framework of health labor markets analysis which is called the uh, WHO framework of health labor market analysis and then we will also see how the WHO framework of health labor market analysis is different from the uh, traditional models of labor market uh, analysis that we take up in uh, labor economics or uh, health and labor economics. And then finally, I want to give an overview, uh, some sort of a situation assessment with regard to the global health workforce availability and shortages issue. Now, uh, we have understood when we studied the Grossman model of demand for health, we did see that uh, the demand for health care uh, leads to uh, demand for uh, various uh, components of healthcare costs and one of the components of healthcare costs is of course the expenditure that we make on the health workforce. So, it is very important uh, to study about health workforce as a part of health economics because it forms the backbone of health systems and it influences both the quantity, uh, quality and access of care. Now, uh, the health workforce actually represents one of the largest components of healthcare expenditures. Uh, labor cost of healthcare is one of the uh, important components of uh, cost components of uh, healthcare. For example, in high income countries, labor can represent up to 70 percent of healthcare operating costs. In the low income countries, the percentages may be slightly below, but certainly not very low. Health workforce uh, as a uh, subject area of study within the field of health economics needs special emphasis and should be studied separately from the general labor force in health economics because we are looking at a specialized group of uh, uh, labor force or workforce 
that has a specialized skill set and they play a critical role in health outcomes, uh, regulatory oversight and uh, there is a unique market dynamics that guides the health labor force supply because there are migration issues that need to be discussed, there are uh, government interventions that take place with regard to minimum wages of uh, health workers, uh, there are various kinds of legislations that guide recruitment policies of health workers and so on. So therefore, uh, within the larger sphere of labor economics or uh, workforce issues, health workforce uh, needs to be studied separately because it is a specialized workforce and there is a lot of segmentation within the health workforce as well. Now, uh, when we say health workers, it is a very general term, but then uh, there are different categories of health workers, uh, but particularly professionals such as doctors, nurses and allied health workers, they require extensive education and specialized training that far exceeds what is typical in the general labor market. For instance, physicians undergo years of university education, residency, specialty training, similarly with nurses. There is a lot of investment of time that goes into the production of the health workforce. So then this makes healthcare workers a special form of human capital which is very scarce and costly to produce. So when it is very scarce and costly to produce and it takes so much time to train the healthcare professionals, it is natural to assume that there is a lot of supply side inflexibility with regard to the supply of healthcare workers meaning that these shortages cannot be quickly overcome or remedied by simply increasing wages or changing recruitment policies because training is a very important part, long years of training is a very important part of the production of this uh, uh, group of uh, workforce. So workforce planning, uh, particularly health workforce planning therefore must consider this long lead time that is required to increase the uh, health uh, workforce uh, supply. So therefore, it is because of these considerations that uh, we think that health workforce is a distinct and specialized labor force and the uh, supply and demand of health workforce and the uh, wages determination of health workforce, they require a separate analysis uh, compared to the general labor force or workforce uh, considerations that we study as part of labor economics. Now, in economics, generally when we talk about uh, the uh, demand and supply model, uh, you all know that when we spoke about demand, demand curve is downward sloping and supply curve is upward sloping and there is an equilibrium point at which the price and quantity demanded and supplied, equilibrium price and quantity demanded and supplied is determined and the demand and supply uh, are sensitive to price changes and there is a general way of functioning of demand and supply of commodities as far as commodities is concerned. Now in this uh, demand and supply healthcare model that we are discussing today, the wage determination model, we are actually talking about not demand and supply of commodities but demand and supply of workforce. So here on the supply side, uh, we have households who are supplying their labor force who have acquired uh, years of specialized training uh, as health workforce. So households are here on the supply side and firms or healthcare institutions, hospitals, uh, whether they are in the government sector or the private sector, they are on the demand side, they are demanding a health workforce. Now, as I said that demand for healthcare is of course derived from demand for healthcare services and there are certain key determining factors of uh, demand for healthcare workforce. One of the first is of course population size and demographics. As the population grows or is aging, there is more and more demand for healthcare services and healthcare workers and therefore with aging population we see that typically the demand for healthcare workers increases. Similarly, uh, higher disease prevalence or morbidity rate increase the need for healthcare services because there is a demand for in improving health status, but with high uh, rates of disease prevalence or morbidity rates, the demand for healthcare services also increases. Now, healthcare technology is one of the important uh, determining factors of uh, demand for healthcare. Uh, now, advances in technology may increase or decrease the demand for healthcare workers depending on whether uh, the automation of tasks creates new treatment methods that requires more health workforce or it reduces the dependence on health workforce. So, it may have a positive or a negative impact on um, direction impact on uh, the health workforce. 
income levels, high income levels often lead to greater consumption of healthcare uh, services. Therefore, it uh, intuitively may lead to an increase in demand for healthcare professionals. Similarly, when we have expanded insurance coverage uh, that increases access to healthcare and therefore there is a rising demand for uh, healthcare workers. Now all of these key determining factors with regard to healthcare workers that we have just seen, we would see that in any country setup where there is, uh, where uh, we see progress and development, where there is economic growth, uh, all of these factors uh, point to the fact that possibly there is a, a scope for further increase in demand for healthcare workers. Now, wages are an important determinant of uh, demand for healthcare workers. Uh, so, we will call this the wage determination model of demand and we will see how the wage determination model of demand for healthcare workers informs how wages influence the demand for healthcare workers. It is more or less the same standard model, uh, neoclassical model of demand and supply that we have uh, seen earlier. Now, this wage determination model basically shows us the interaction between wage levels and the quantity of health workers that employers are willing to hire. And in this case, the employers who are demanding the health workforce may be hospitals, clinics or other healthcare institutions in the uh, government or the private sector. So, it is a standard model here on the x axis instead of quantity of commodities, we see the quantity of workers. So, there are number of workers on the y axis, we have the wage rates and uh, the supply curve of workers is upward sloping, which basically reflects that as wage increase, more people are willing to enter the healthcare profession or offer more labor hours. So, the wage rate of the workforce is basically the price of the workforce. So, it reflects supply curve is from we are looking at supply of health workforce as far as the households are concerned. So, it reflects that as price increases or if the price of participation in the healthcare labor market is high, you are getting higher wages, then more people of course are willing to enter the healthcare profession and offer more labor hours increasing the supply of health workforce. So, you have an upward sloping supply curve. Now, healthcare workers like other labor markets of course are attracted to jobs with higher wages or higher pay. So, a higher wage induces more people to invest themselves in uh, getting trained in uh, the healthcare sector and therefore entering the workforce. So, there is a the demand for uh, education, the demand for education or the, uh, the demand for uh, staying in education for longer duration uh, becomes very high. Now, the demand curve here is downward sloping in much the same way as we have seen the demand curve for uh, general goods and services. This indicates that when wages rise, the employers are less willing to hire workers because the cost of employing each worker becomes very high. Uh, so, therefore, the quantity of healthcare workers demanded decreases as wage increases and you will see that this is how we have understood the standard uh, labor market model uh, in economics and we have also understood the standard uh, demand and supply of goods and services. The similar kind of an analogy holds here in the case of supply and demand for workers or healthcare workers only uh, difference being that uh, unlike the product market or services, uh, other services market here we see that there are households on the supply side, they are supplying labor and the labor is being demanded by the healthcare institutions. Now, what is the impact of wage increase on demand and supply? So, let us consider what happens if wages increase for healthcare workers either because of some policy decision, example there is a uh, minimum wage increase or market conditions because of scarcity of skilled professionals and so on. Generally, we will see that there are uh, movements along the demand curve or shifts in the demand curve. So, for example, here when we see that if wage increases, this is the equilibrium wage rate uh, and the equilibrium amount of uh, workers that are demanded and supplied. So, let us say the wage increases from WE to W2 here, the quantity of workers uh, demanded by employers decrease. So, the employers are demanding only this much amount of uh, workers here and this is because at higher wages, hiring additional healthcare workers becomes more expensive for healthcare institutions. Now, as a result, employers might reduce the number of workers they employ or substitute them with technology or lower cost staff causing the demand curve to contract or move leftward, uh, shift leftward along the curve. 
Now, what is the supply response? On the supply side, higher wages typically lead to an increase in the number of people willing to work in the healthcare sector or healthcare workers offering more hours causing movement up along the supply curve. And if wages are set above the market clearing wage which is WE, there actually might be an excess supply of healthcare workers and this is how we study excess supply and excess demand in uh, standard demand supply models also. Meaning, so when there is an excess supply, it basically means that more people are willing to work than there are jobs available at that wage level. Similarly, we can also think of uh, shortage of healthcare workers. We can consider a scenario where there is a uh, shortage of uh, healthcare workers due to low wages. So, if wages are kept below the equilibrium level, demand for healthcare workers will exceed the supply of uh, healthcare workers, leading to an imbalance in the form of excess demand or shortage of healthcare workers. So, when the wage here is set uh, below the market uh, clearing level which is WE, let us say wages are set at W1, then at this lower wage here, employers are demanding OQE number of workers, but the supply in the market is OQ1. So, this difference, uh, the distance between Q1, QE gives us the shortage of healthcare workers. Now, there can also be various kinds of wage rigidities. Uh, the wages in the labor market are generally not very flexible and uh, there may be various kinds of wage rigidities because of uh, uh, minimum wage legislations by the or, gov or different kinds of government interventions. And in many healthcare systems, particularly government intervention or collective bargaining sets wages which may cause uh, wage rigidities. That is, wages do not adjust to clear the market, they are not very flexible. And this can result in persistent shortages or surpluses of healthcare workers. Uh, for example, if the government uh, sets wages above the equilibrium wage, supply of healthcare workers may exceed demand, creating a surplus situation. And if wages are kept too low, a shortage of healthcare workers may persist, giving rise to a situation of excess demand. Now, as a part of the wage determination model, uh, we also often discuss about marginal productivity of labor. So, uh, I would just want to briefly discuss what marginal productivity of labor would mean in the context of healthcare work workers or healthcare workforce. Now, demand for healthcare workers is often based on their marginal productivity. We have understood the concept of uh, marginal and marginal productivity in economics, which basically refers to the additional healthcare services or output produced by an additional healthcare worker or the contribution uh, to output made by an additional healthcare worker who is recruited. So, according to this marginal productivity theory, the idea is very simple that employers will hire healthcare workers only up to the point where the wage uh, they pay equals the marginal revenue product of labor, which means the additional revenue generated by the services the worker provides. So, for example, if a hospital will hire more nurses, uh, only as long as the revenue from the care provided by each additional nurse is greater than or equal to the nurse's wage. So, once uh, wages exceed the revenue generated by an additional worker, the hospital may want to stop hiring more staff. So, this is the standard way in which we have discussed or we have come to understand uh, the uh, demand and supply for uh, workforce or laborers, uh, labor in the context of uh, labor economics and uh, this is an extension of uh, labor economics standard models of labor demand and supply to health economics to understand the healthcare workforce demand and supply. Now, we will move on to some of the extensions of these uh, how we have moved from this traditional analysis of labor demand and supply based upon the wage determination model and marginal productivity theory to how presently governments across the world have come to analyze the health labor markets or have been able to carry out health labor market analysis. Now, I want to begin with this uh, model which is uh, in the literature it is referred to as the stock flow model of healthcare labor force. Uh, so, this is basically a dynamic framework which is used to analyze the supply of healthcare workers over time and it helps us to understand how the healthcare labor force evolves due to various uh, flows. There may be inflows and there are outflows. I will presently discuss what do we mean by inflows and outflows in the healthcare uh, labor market. 
So, this model the stock flow model basically provides a more uh, comprehensive view of workforce supply than the static model as we just saw in the case of the traditional model of the wage determination model which is considered to be a more static model. We are not looking at uh, changes in the labor market over time. So, the stock flow model basically tracks changes in the stock of healthcare workers over time and it can also help predict future shortages or surpluses which is essential for uh, policy planning and policy implementation. Now, let us understand what are the components of the stock flow model. What do we mean by stock here? The stock of healthcare workers, the stock basically refers to the total number of healthcare workers at any given point in time and this includes all active professionals, doctors, nurses, allied health professionals who are available to provide healthcare services. So, we are not necessarily referring to doctors and nurses as uh, the health workforce here. We are referring to all of those uh, allied professionals who are a part of healthcare sector who contribute to delivery of healthcare services as healthcare workforce or workers. Now, there are two important components here as far as the stock of healthcare workers is concerned. There is an inflow, so there is an addition to the stock. Now, how does addition to the stock take place? It includes uh, new graduates, that is individuals who have completed their medical training, nursing training or other healthcare related training programs and they are entering the workforce. It also includes immigration, healthcare workers who migrate from other regions or countries to work in the local healthcare system. Uh, there may also be re-entry of uh, people who may have uh, received healthcare training at some point of time, but may have discontinued and may want to re-enter uh, the workforce. So, these are workers who may have left the profession temporarily because of various reasons and they are returning to the workforce. Uh, child care is one of the important reasons why people uh, move out of uh, temporarily move out of uh, labor force and then make a re-entry. The same with uh, health care workers as well. There can also be delayed retirements, for example, workers who delay their retirement and continue to work longer than expected or there may be re-deployments uh, or re-employments uh, where because of shortages, uh, retired uh, physicians or retired uh, healthcare workers may also be asked to continue in the workforce to mitigate the problems of uh, shortages. So, inflows add to the stock of health workforce in a given period of time. Then there are outflows also, outflows basically reduce the stock of healthcare workers and they include uh, workers who leave the profession permanently because of reaching retirement age. It may be because of a career change, change. so healthcare professionals who may have invested a lot of time to be in the healthcare sector may uh, suddenly want to shift to other sectors because of various reasons unrelated to healthcare. There may be temporary leaves, workers who take a break from active service for reasons like family care, education, burnout, etc. There may be migrations, workers who emigrate to other countries or regions and it may lead to a decrease in the domestic workforce, imbalances in the domestic workforce. Uh, this is uh, one of the uh, problem areas for countries such as India, where there is a lot of migration of professional uh, workforce, uh, particularly in the health sector leading to mismatches in the domestic labor markets or shortages in the domestic labor markets. There may also be mortality and disability because some workers may leave the profession due to uh, uh, death or disability. Now, so the stock flow equation would look something like this. The healthcare workers at any point in time can be modeled uh, with a simple stock flow equation. So, stock of health workers at time t is basically the stock at time t minus 1 which has been in the, so the stock of health workforce in the previous time period plus all the inflows during the given time period and minus all the outflows in the given time period. So, stock at time t represents the number of healthcare workers at the current time period, time t minus 1 is workers in the previous period, inflows represent number of new entrants and we have just discussed how we can, how we can look at the number of entrants or how we can actually come up with an estimate of the inflows. So, they are the number of new entrants to the workforce in that period and outflows will represent the number of workers leaving the workforce in that period. This is a basic framework for supply of health workers uh, stock flow model which I have 
collected from the WHO literature on the stock flow model. The stock flow model of understanding uh, health workforce uh, has evolved over a period of time and there is a lot of literature that have been added on to uh, this understanding. So, this is one of the basic frameworks that can be used to understand the stock flow model. So, inflows uh, and then that adds to the stock of health workers and then there are outflows and uh, policies on education, uh, wages, migration, retirement, all of these impact inflows and outflows and uh, also uh, impacting the overall stock of health workers that we have during a given period of time. Now, uh, so far what we have discussed is the traditional model of uh, how wages lead to determination of supply and demand for healthcare workers in the market and uh, we briefly understood uh, the concept of marginal productivity of labor and then we came to the uh, understanding of how we look at stock of healthcare workers. Uh, now, I want to enter into the discussion in the current uh, widely used framework in uh, national as well as international literature in policy circles with regard to how we want to assess health labor markets. So, the, uh, the one of the widely used frameworks is what is referred to as the WHO health labor market uh, framework or analysis. Various analysis have been carried out, are continuing to be carried out at various country levels, at sub-regional levels or sub-national levels and that gives us a sense of where we stand in terms of health workforce availability and distribution. So, what is this WHO health labor market analysis framework? Uh, it can be defined as a comprehensive model which is designed to help policy makers understand the complex dynamics of the health uh, workforce and it goes beyond the traditional supply demand models by incorporating a wide range of factors. For example, it includes the health system needs, labor market dynamics, economic and social influences and this framework provides a holistic view of how health labor markets function and how they interact with the broader systems making it distinct from the more narrowly focused models discussed earlier. So, the WHO framework also considers both the supply side, the availability of health workers and the demand side which is the need for utilization of health workers, but it also addresses other factors that affect uh, uh, health workforce outcomes uh, which may not necessarily be brought about only by an economic analysis of demand and supply factors, but might include a lot of policy analysis with regard to how uh, pay structures are uh, designed, how recruitment policies are designed, uh, how uh, regional planning is being carried out which needs to be integrated to the larger economic understanding of demand and supply conditions and that is what makes the WHO health labor market framework slightly different from the economic models of wage determination and uh, its impact on uh, demand and supply of health workforce. So, we also need to pay some attention to what are the important aspects that the WHO framework considers. Uh, I will presently uh, provide uh, the uh, framework in the form of a diagrammatic scheme, uh, a schema as to how WHO has presented this framework of analysis. But let us look at some of the important aspects of this framework. One is education and training. Uh, the understanding is that the capacity of educational institutions to produce healthcare workers, the curriculum, the quality of training and the rate at which graduates enter the workforce is a very important aspect of analysis of health labor market analysis. So, when we want to understand the supply of health workers, we cannot just focus on how many are available at a given uh, period of in the current period or at a given point in time unless we try to understand uh, what is the investment, the human capital investment that is being made on their education and training. Now, once they are in the workforce, we uh, need to pay attention to the employment conditions of the health labor force or the health workforce, the wages, their working conditions, uh, job security and career advancement opportunities and that includes both public and private sector employment considering how different conditions influence health worker behavior. For example, uh, attritions, uh, retrenchments, migrations, job satisfaction, these are very important issues that need to be considered within the larger aspect of employment conditions. 
Similarly, regulations and governance uh, plays a very important role, particularly in the context of health labor market analysis, because remember that we are talking about a very unique market, which has a lot of licensing and regulations in place with regard to who is to be recruited, what they need to handle, what are the trainings that they need to uh, receive so that they are qualified enough to provide those services and so on. So, the role of laws, professional standards, licensing requirements in shaping who can enter the workforce, how health workers are allocated across regions or specialities and how quality is maintained is a very important aspect of this uh, WHO framework of analysis. Labor market flexibility is another important aspect. This basically includes the ability of the health labor market to respond to the changing demands of the uh, population such as uh, by task shifting example allowing nurses to perform certain physician duties or increasing part time work. Uh, you may have come across these kinds of task shifting examples particularly in the case of emergency uh, periods for example, the pandemic period when um, nursing staff uh, and paramedics were asked to handle a lot of health challenges for which they may not have been trained but because of their uh, being in the service for a very long duration of time, it was put on their shoulders to be able to task shift from one uh, place to the other when emergency uh, disease outbreaks uh, hit. So, labor market flexibility is a very important aspect of this workforce and that uh, comes with its share of uh, burdens and responsibilities. Health system needs is integral to the analysis of the WHO framework of uh, health labor market analysis because this is not purely drawn by market forces. In the wage determination model, we see that uh, wages are uh, market determined and then therefore, demand and supply for health workforce are market determined. But often market forces alone cannot inform us about the health workers need that a country is facing that depends upon the health system needs. Uh, what are the distribution of health workers policy? What are the requirements of uh, what are the unmet needs of different uh, uh, sets of population in different locations of the country? These become a very important factor for determination of health workforce uh, availability. So, as I was saying that health system needs are dictated by population health disease burdens, public health objectives which may not always align with market driven uh, supply and demand. Uh, so, for example, even if the market does not demand many public health workers, the health system may need them to meet health targets. So, for example, we do understand that COVID uh, situation was handled largely by the public health professionals in this country. Now, while we may put a lot of premium on private practice and specialized doctors and healthcare workers uh, providing services in the private sector. But uh, during the period of health emergencies, the surge in demand for healthcare services is largely being handled by the trained public health workforce. So, here the market does not demand many healthcare uh, public health workers, but the health system may need them to meet these health targets, which becomes a very uh, basic human right issue as far as the need of the system to address these problems in a given uh, period of time. The broader economic and social context has a very important role to play in health labor markets uh, such as national income levels, they affect both supply of healthcare workers through funding for education and salaries and demand for services through people's ability to pay for healthcare services. And the social context may include gender norms, migration patterns, public perceptions of health career. Uh, they are wanting to be a part of the healthcare market. This becomes a very important uh, determinant of uh, uh, workforce available in the healthcare market. Finally, demographic and epidemiological transitions also provide a lot of context to uh, health workforce availability because the changes in population size, aging, disease patterns, they all affect the demand for healthcare workers. And we have already discussed as that as population ages, uh, there is a need for long term care workers and the demand for long term care workers also increase. Now, this is the uh, WHO framework of uh, health labor market uh, analysis. This is a very comprehensive framework. 
so here uh, economy, population and broader societal drivers basically determine uh, the availability and of healthcare workers and the demand for healthcare workers. Now, if you see here there are two broad sectors that have been highlighted the education sector and the labor market dynamics. Now, education sector or the education market becomes an important prerequisite for the availability of healthcare workers over a period of time. So, you have uh, from high school to education in health, education in other fields. Uh, now, your quality of education, your quantity of education determines the pool of qualified health workers because they necessarily have to pass the education market, pass by the education market to be uh, available as a pool of qualified health workers. Now, of them some may uh, migrate, some may uh, immigrate or some may emigrate uh, and uh, be a part of the pool of uh, qualified health workers. There may be outflows, there may be inflows also. Now, from among those uh, stock of qualified healthcare workers, there may be people who have found employed, they may be unemployed or they may be out of labor force, meaning that people who are seeking jobs in the health sector, who have been trained in the health sector and may have found employment in the health sector. There may also be people who are trained in health sector or trained in provision of healthcare services. They are seeking work in healthcare services but have not been able to uh, land up in a job that allows them to practice uh, uh, delivery of healthcare services. So, they may be a part of the unemployed pool and there may be others who have for various reasons uh, stopped seeking work altogether despite the fact that they have spent a lot of time in the education sector receiving uh, education on delivery of healthcare services. So, it is a specialized uh, labor force. Uh, it is a specialized pool of people who probably have gone through this sector and been a part of a pool of qualified health workers, but for some reason are no longer looking for work. So, they are neither employed nor unemployed, but they are completely out of labor force. Now, those who are the employed, the small subset of people who are employed now form a part of the healthcare sector and they uh, may be directly employed in the healthcare sector or they may have associations with other sectors but with specific focus on healthcare and they are the ones who constitute what is called the health workforce who are equipped to deliver quality healthcare uh, services and of course the larger uh, policy framework uh, since the last few years is that there is this objective of universal health coverage with safe, effective, person-centered health services. So, from a larger pool of qualified health workers, there is a small minority that actually is retained by the healthcare sector. So, therefore, there is a lot of burden on the small minority of healthcare sector to be able to provide these delivery of quality health services. Now, on the policy side, there is a lot happening here because there are a lot of policies on production. As we have seen in the duration of this course that there are various education policies, there are health sector policies that influence the education of the health sector or preparing for uh, being in the health sector. So, there are uh, policies on uh, infrastructure, material, enrollment, selecting students, teaching staff that influences the education sector and that contributes to the pool of qualified health workers. There are various policies with regard to migration, uh, unemployment policies, employment policies, bringing health workers back into the healthcare sector requires a lot of reskilling and upskilling. Um, then there are various policies to address maldistribution and inefficiencies to improve productivity and performance, uh, continuous training to improve skill mix composition of the health workers and to retain health workers in underserved areas, which is a very important uh, area. Uh, particularly in uh, countries such as ours where there is a uh, lot of uh, underserved areas which has very um, adverse health outcomes and that requires a lot of attention as far as healthcare uh, delivery is concerned. There are of course policies to regulate uh, the uh, private sector because there are uh, policies to manage dual practice to improve quality of training, enhancing service delivery and so on. So, here if you see supply of health workers refers to the pool of qualified health workers willing to work in the healthcare sector and demand of health workers refer to public and private institutions that constitute the healthcare uh, sector. 
Now, you would see that compared to the uh, static models of wage determination uh, and how it impacts demand and supply of labor, the WHO framework of labor market analysis basically constitutes a holistic understanding of how uh, what are the drivers, uh, societal drivers, economy, population drivers for understanding the, sp uh, the pool of uh, some qualified health workers. So, health worker education is important to understand the labor market dynamics, health system unmet needs uh, and the health outcomes. All of these together go on to uh, determine uh, what is the health uh, labor requirement within a given country in a given period of time. And of course, there are policies and uh, implementations uh, that take place based upon the assessment of all of these needs. So, health labor market analysis would not just mean uh, understanding the wages or the amount of uh, quantity of workers demanded and supplied in a given period of time. It also refers to understanding all of these dynamics and then assessing the requirement of the uh, or the assessing the health labor market with regard to its uh, requirements. So, how does the WHO framework differ from traditional models? One is that there are uh, this model, uh, this framework introduces multidimensional approach versus the supply demand focus of the traditional model. The traditional models such as wage determination models of stock flow models, they tend to focus on supply and demand of healthcare workers in purely economic terms and they analyze how wages, education capacity and migration affect labor supply or how the demand for services responds to changes in population size, income levels or morbidity. But the WHO framework integrates multiple dimensions, health system needs, regulations, employment conditions and socioeconomic factors and it recognizes that labor market forces alone may not meet the health needs of population and emphasizes the interplay between education systems, labor market structures and the broader health system. Secondly, it focuses a lot on health systems needs versus market forces and therefore, this becomes an important uh, policy mechanism, a policy instrument, labor market analysis immediately becomes a policy instrument uh, for policy intervention or policy implementation. So, traditional models assume that market forces that is wages, prices and profit, they determine the optimal allocation of healthcare workers and they are based on the idea that if wages are too low or too high, the market will adjust the supply of health workers on their own. But the uh, WHO framework challenges this assumption and it emphasizes that health system needs may differ from what the market provides. For example, certain specialties like rural or public health positions may be underfunded or undervalued in market terms, but they are crucial for achieving uh, universal health coverage and addressing public health challenges. So, therefore, the framework highlights the gaps between what the market demands and what the health system uh, uh, needs. So, this is a systems approach to understanding uh, the demand for uh, healthcare workers. Broader contextual factors are also taken in the health labor market analysis framework provided by the uh, WHO because the traditional models like the wage determination or marginal productivity of labor model, they generally focus on the immediate interaction between workers and employees treating factors like uh, wages, working conditions and productivity as the key variables. But the WHO framework goes beyond this by considering broader contextual factors such as economic conditions, social norms, uh, gender roles for example, in healthcare employment and political systems, regulations, governance structures. These factors significantly influence the ability of the labor market to meet health needs. So, therefore, the WHO framework is a dynamic systems approach, but the traditional models are mostly static analysis. Traditional models uh, also provide some dynamic element, particularly the stock flow model because it tracks inflows and outflows over time, but they often consider changes in workforce in isolation from the broader health system or social context. But as I was mentioning that the WHO framework uses a systems approach and it considers how various parts of the health system interact with each other. For instance, shortages in one health profession can lead to task shifting 
where other professionals like nurses or midwives take on tasks previously reserved for doctors and that is a huge burden on the current workforce of nurses and there might be uh, associated uh, risks uh, with uh, these kinds of task shifting measures but given the public health requirement it may be a necessity to do so. This framework also considers how technological advancements or new health policies influence both demand for healthcare services and the health workforce's capacity to meet that demand. Regulatory and governance role is very important in the WHO framework because it explicitly incorporates regulatory and governance mechanisms as central components of the health labor market. It acknowledges that regulatory policies like certification processes, immigration rules or scope of practice regulations, they directly influence both supply of health workers and distribution across regions or specialties. So, this framework focuses on governance structures or health governance structures highlighting how decision making takes place at various levels, local, national, international and all of these affect the labor market dynamics. But the traditional models sometimes incorporate regulations such as licensing requirements or wage setting mechanisms, but they are often treated as external to the model or external constraints to the model. There are distributional considerations which are uh, integrated within the WHO framework because there are geographic and specialty specific distribution of health workers, gender disparities in healthcare employment, mismatches between worker skills and health system needs and this framework is especially concerned with maldistribution such as shortages of healthcare workers in rural areas or underserved specialties. But the traditional models often emphasize on the aggregate supply and demand for health workers and there is little attention to geographic, gender based or specialty specific imbalances. And this is where I feel that health economics and other associated health disciplines have a lot to give each other in terms of understanding the overall uh, scenario with respect to various components of the health sector, health workforce being just one among them. WHO framework has especially uh, important focus on health outcomes, health labor markets are not looked at in isolation unlike the traditional models where the focus is on achieving equilibrium in the labor market because that is the ultimate goal. But the WHO framework connects it to health outcomes, uh, there is explicit linking of the health labor market to systems performance arguing that an efficient and equitable allocation of health workers should lead to better access to health care improved service quality and better health outcomes. Now, how is this uh, WHO framework used in practice? Now, there is a lot of literature that has come up in the last uh, 15 years or so with regard to how this framework is used in practice in different countries, even at the subnational levels within different countries, India being a prime case among them because uh, we have a federal uh, structure and health is a, a state policy. The states have a lot of uh, sway over uh, health policy and therefore, how this framework is to be used in practice is an innovation in itself. Uh, I would like to identify three important factors, first is policy planning and forecasting. The WHO uh, HL, uh, the health labor market analysis framework is used to guide national governments and international organizations. They can forecast their health workforce needs and plan the health system reforms. It can be used to identify areas where current labor market policies are leading to workforce shortages or inefficiencies and they can suggest interventions such as improved educational programs, better working conditions, regulatory reforms, etc. Uh, there is a framework of global health workforce strategy workforce to, for meeting the uh, 2030 SDG agenda. This is a global initiative aimed at addressing workforce shortages and maldistribution and countries use this framework to develop more responsive workforce policies that align with global goals like universal health coverage. There is also a lot of gap identification and resource allocation that can take place using this framework by identifying the gaps between market driven demand for healthcare and health systems uh, driven demand for healthcare. This framework can help countries allocate resources more effectively to address specific workforce challenges such as shortages in rural areas or in certain specialties uh, for example, in geriatrics and mental health particularly when we are moving towards aging population. Now, I want to come to the last part of uh, this lesson where I want to focus on uh, the um, uh, global workforce scenario 
Now, there are various kinds of country level analysis that are also being attempted that is being attempted for India as well and uh, we have attempted that in the case of uh, certain states in India also. There is a lot of emerging literature in the context of health workforce scenarios uh, with regard to national and subnational analysis. I want to focus on one uh, um, uh, ground breaking report that came out in 2006 which was the World Health Report of 2006 and it was titled as Working Together for Health. It came up with a very important finding and that is that health workers save lives. If you look at this figure here, the x axis shows the density of health workers from low to high and the y axis shows the probability of survival of infants, children and mothers from low to high. And the, uh, if you look at the upward sloping curves, this basically shows that as the density of health workers increase, the probability of survival of infants, children and mothers also increase. And over a period of time, we have seen that uh, countries after countries have experienced improvements in infant survival, child survival and maternal survival. And one of the important reasons for this has been identified as the presence of health workforce at the community level or the density of health workers has played a very important role in ensuring uh, the check of infant mortality, child mortality and maternal mortality. So, now we have ample evidence and the World Health Report of 2006 uh, emphasized and underlined this important finding that we have ample evidence that worker numbers and quality are positively associated with immunization coverage, outreach of primary care and infant, child and maternal survival. So, that sort of center staged the uh, focus on uh, strengthening health workforce or um, sometimes it is also referred to as human resources for health where the focus now has to be on ensuring that this specialized workforce needs uh, protection, needs promotion and being provided with a lot of resilience to be able to meet the unmet needs, health needs of a country. Now, I have put together two important tables from the report, the World Health Report of 2016, which basically gives the global health workforce data by density. Now, you would see that there is no specific mention of South Asian countries here. There is a lot of data lag with regard to health workforce data and therefore, there is a lot of work that is required for health labor market analysis at the subnational levels and the national levels to uh, come up with better data. But in 2006, it was estimated that we had about 59.2 million health uh, workers, of them 39.4 million were health service providers and 19.7 million were health management and support workers. So, of the total health workers, 67% uh, were health service providers and 33% were support workers. And the report identified some of the driving forces. Uh, health needs, health systems and context. So, demographics, disease burden, epidemics, uh, financing, technology, consumer preferences, labor and education, public sector reforms and globalization. These were some of the driving forces that designed the um, health labor market in different countries and uh, workforce challenges were also highlighted in this report which included numbers uh, shortages in some places, excesses in some certain specialties, uh, there was skill mix, so health team balance, uh, distribution issues, uh, internal distribution issues, international migration issues and working conditions with respect to compensation, non-financial incentives and workplace safety. These were some of the important findings from the 2006 uh, report. Uh, there was 59.2 million full time paid health workers worldwide and these workers are in health enterprises whose uh, primary role was to improve health such as health programs operated by government or NGOs plus additional health workers in uh, non-health organizations such as nursing staff in a company, school clinic, etc. Health service providers constituted about two-thirds of the global health workforce, uh, while the remaining third is composed of health management and support workers. The ratio of nurses to doctors ranges from nearly 8 is to 1 in the African region to 1.5 to 1 in the Western Pacific region. So, there is a lot of global heterogeneity with regard to uh, the ratio of nurses to doctors. Among countries, uh, there are approximately 4 nurses per doctor in Canada and United States, 
while uh, countries such as Chile, Peru, uh, El Salvador, Mexico have fewer than one nurse per doctor. Uh, the spectrum of essential worker competencies is characterized by imbalances. For example, in the dire shortage of public health specialists and healthcare managers in many countries were highlighted. And it was found that typically more than 70 percent of doctors are male, while more than 70 percent of nurses are female worldwide. So, this brought out a marked gender imbalance with regard to the distribution of doctors and nurses. And about two thirds of the workers are in the public sector and one third is in the private sector. The 2006 report also gave a map of countries that are facing critical shortages of health service providers. India was also marked as one of the uh, countries. In fact, the whole of South Asia uh, was uh, highlighted as one of the important uh, regions of the world which has seen critical shortage of health service providers including doctors, nurses and midwives. So, that sort of brings into policy uh, focus the importance that needs to be laid on uh, the uh, health labor market analysis. Now, what is the recent health workforce scenario? I have collected a few uh, estimates from the WHO's Global Strategy on Human Resources for Health Workforce 2020. It looks like there is a global shortage of health workforce. As of 2020, the global health workforce was estimated to be 65 million workers that included doctors, nurses and other health professionals. But despite the growth uh, between 2006 and 2020, there is a growth of health professionals. But despite the growth, the world faces a projected shortage of 15 million health workers by 2030. And the shortage is most severe in low and middle income countries, particularly in sub-Saharan Africa, Eastern Mediterranean region, including South Asia, where both demand for services and burden of diseases are growing. Uh, COVID-19 impact has been highlighted. The COVID-19 pandemic has strained the health workforce globally, leading to very high attrition rates due to burnout, illnesses and death, but also increasing the demand for healthcare services. And in response, many countries have attempted to expand their workforce through emergency recruitment, increased training and innovative use of technology, for example, telemedicine. But there are many challenges that remain and various analysis are currently being undertaken to uh, improve upon uh, health workforce recruitment policies and so on. Aging workforce has been highlighted globally as one of the aspects that contributes to um, health uh, uh, workforce uh, demand. A significant portion of the global health workforce is ap approaching retirement age, particularly in high income countries. And this aging population of health workers contributes to the anticipated shortages as these workers exit the profession faster than new professionals can be trained and integrated. There are migration and distribution issues. Health worker migration continues to create domestic imbalances because low and middle income countries train health workers who then migrate to high income countries. So, it is uh, becoming very difficult to retain the health workers who have been trained in their own country to serve in their own country. There is of course a lot of gender uh, disparity in health workforce. Women make up nearly 70 percent of the global health and social workforce addressing gender related barriers and improving working conditions. Uh, but although there is a, a huge presence of women uh, in general in the global health and social workforce, there is a lot of segmentation with regard to uh, specialties or occupational segregation within the health uh, workforce, which is uh, a separate analysis altogether and falls beyond the scope of our present class, but it is an important area uh, that needs to be highlighted. So, what we have done in today's class is to flag off the importance of uh, health labor market or health workforce uh, in as one of the important components of healthcare expenditures. And over a period of time, we have seen that because of the uh, economic growth and development that is being experienced by different countries, the importance on health workforce has increased. Uh, what we wanted to do and we did in today's class is to highlight that the issue of health workforce needs to be separated out from the uh, overall uh, labor force workforce considerations that we study as part of uh, labor economics. And health economics has uh, borrowed a lot of concepts from labor economics to be able to understand the health labor 
labor market demand and supply of workforce and uh, wage determination model is one of the important uh, explanations of how demand and supply of health workforce takes place in a health labor market. But we saw that over a period of time there has been a lot of changes or adaptations to uh, various kinds of uh, understanding as to how the health labor market needs to be uh, understood and studied uh, with respect to policy uh, frameworks and policy analysis. Uh, the standard economic models look at uh, uh, pay a lot of uh, uh, importance to uh, market forces and the uh, importance of market forces in the uh, demand for health workers. But the WHO framework and other international frameworks, the currently in use frameworks have moved towards focusing on health systems needs and the health systems needs have various drivers. Uh, that determine uh, the demand and supply of health workforce and we have seen that education policy and labor policy of a country play an important role as far as uh, the demand and supply of health workforce is concerned. Finally, we saw that uh, globally the health workforce form a sizable proportion of uh, total workforce but we also saw that there is a lot of shortages despite the fact that health labor force has been increasing, workforce has been increasing, there is a lot of shortages and low and middle income countries seem to be disproportionately sharing the burden of these shortages. There are a lot of issues uh, with regard to attrition and lot of issues with regard to skill mismatch and distribution of workforce when it comes to health workforce of the low and middle income countries. And then uh, finally, uh, we uh, saw that COVID-19 has brought in an important uh, angle to understanding uh, the health workforce uh, shortages. Uh, there are of course, a lot of gender disparities with regard to health workforce, but all of these uh, need to be understood within the larger uh, framework or broader framework of health policy and systems analysis uh, with regard to uh, health workforce. For this lesson, I have used a few uh, important references. I have used some uh, research papers on health labor market analysis in low and middle income countries and I have primarily referred to the uh, labor economics textbooks on uh, wage determination models of uh, labor demand and supply and also the uh, WHO uh, report of 2016 on World Health Report uh, which is uh, working together for health which is a pioneering report and uh, the uh, recent global strategy on human resources for health workforce 2030 uh, focusing on the 2030 SDG agenda. I hope you will find this class uh, resourceful and you can refer to some of these uh, literature that I have highlighted to further pursue specific questions if you have in your mind. I will see you in the next class. Thank you. Mm -hmm.